I am a woman liberated, a young black woman free. What I do with my gift of life will be controlled by me. I am a woman proud, a young black woman strong. My female mystique is just enough to keep me moving on. I am a woman faithful, a young black woman true. Anything that is asked of me, you can count on me to do. Dr. Oak, how do you tackle this issue of health inequity? Because it brings in so many other factors. For me as a doctor, and I'm a primary care physician and I enjoy taking care of patients, only a very small fraction of their health has anything to do with what I do in the office. So much of their life is determined by exactly what you said, Katie, the social determinants of health, the structural determinants of health, racism, poverty, discrimination, food access, having housing, all those things are so much more important to someone's overall health than anything they do with, with medical care. And so one way to, to really start to get at that is to ask about it. Um, and, and this is one of the things that I am really excited about that we're doing at Humana is screening people for social needs. And what are the health related social needs that might impact our ability to give them really good care. So asking, do you know when your next meal is going to come and where it's going to come from? And, and assessing food security and, and the, the stability of food in your, in your life. Understanding, do you have housing? I had an experience early in my career. I was taking care of a patient that had really poorly controlled diabetes, a Puerto Rican man in Connecticut. And I kept, he kept on coming every week and I keep on increasing his insulin. I'd be like, gosh, his, his blood sugar's so high. Okay, we're gonna, go up, we're gonna go up another 10 units. We're gonna go up, and I did this for weeks. One of the women that are called access to care workers came to talk to me and she said, Dr. O, you know he's homeless, right? And I had no idea. He was never picking up the insulin and he had no place to store it even if he got it because he didn't have a refrigerator. And so if I didn't take care of that issue, making sure that he had stable housing and basic needs like refrigeration, then I could never really do anything about his diabetes. So asking, understanding where people are coming from is an is important first step. When I finally asked him, how come you never told me you were homeless? He said, you never asked. You yourself had an experience when you were pregnant and had to go to the ER. What happened? So during my second pregnancy, Katie, I was very, very sick. I had a lot of different complications, which required me to go to the emergency department and to the hospital on numerous occasions. And one time I went, to, I, I was experiencing severe, severe shaking and chills. Um, and a friend of mine who is a nurse, uh, she's a white woman nurse, a very close friend of mine, her name is Sarah. I called her I, and she was close by and she came and she took me to the emergency department. And I, I get there and the emergency doctor comes to talk to me and he says to me, he can understand how I might be anxious because it's hard when you're doing this without a partner and you don't have financial resources to go through a pregnancy. And he as, an, immediately assumed that I was single and that I was poor and that I was just anxious. And so I remember hearing it and thinking, what is he talking about? But Sarah immediately jumps in and says, what made you assume that about her? What about her made you just assume all those things and decide that she was anxious? She's got a fever. She's you know, trembling and shaking in front of you. And it turned out I had a, like a massive kidney infection at that time. But I, as I reflect on that, I think he was really ready to dismiss me. And there's nothing wrong with if I, if I had been poor. There's nothing wrong if I had been a single mother. But he had decided that my symptoms were more anxiety than they were actually real medical symptoms. I always wonder what happens if Sarah weren't there because I was kind of out of it a little bit. Um, and she didn't advocate for me, but how dangerous that assumption was that he was going to minimize my symptoms because he assumed something about me. We talk about networks and allies and support systems. You have a story about a child in Florida, Dr. O, where that made such a difference. Let me tell you the story about this child named Kyle, who was born to a mother in Florida who, uh, an African-American woman, who gave birth to her early. So she was born prematurely, uh, and she was born with a very severe birth defect, which meant that there was uh, a connection between her, basically her breathing tube and her eating tube, and that is essentially a life-threatening condition she was born with. The mother couldn't even see her for the first three months, or hold her for the first three months of her life, rather, because of how sick she was. 
And so they needed to get a life-saving surgery for this child. And it needed to be done with a very experienced hand. And they did not have the person that could do that surgery in Florida. So the nurse case manager from Humana started to talk to the mom and the, and the dad and the family and figure out what resources do they have, what was needed. And then the doctor said, I need to tap into my network and see who can do this surgery for this child so we can potentially save her life. And so he finally found a colleague of his at Cincinnati Children's Hospital in Ohio where that, there was a specialist in this particular type of defect. And Humana made the arrangements for the child and the family to be flown to Ohio so that she could have this surgery. And I got a chance to see some videos of this little girl at the age of four now, who is perfect and beautiful and a, just adorable, wonderful child. But what this story tells you is that it is so important to have that human touch. And it shows you the importance of having this entire network around you that cares about not just a group of patients at large, but this particular heartbeat and this particular breath of this particular child. And I, the, the, in so many ways, this could have been another statistic. It's a, a black woman, had the baby prematurely, so we already know that that's a very high risk. And then the baby could have died before her first birthday, which again, could have been another statistic. And because of those interventions, addressing those social needs and trying to figure out how do we make sure that we give our very best to this patient and her family, we were able to, to save this little child and, and give be a blessing to the family. And so I, I just love the story and love seeing the little girl and seeing that their family is still so connected to our organization because uh, we got it right. I am a woman, a leader, a young black woman, a guide. I take control to reach my goal with dignity and pride. I am a woman, assertive, a young black woman, tough. I will help the ones who need me if times are getting rough. I am a woman caring, a young black woman smart. The cries of my people around the world have places in my heart. I'm so excited about this opportunity to be the inaugural Chief Health Equity Officer at Humana because this role, even just creating the role, signifies such a commitment to improving health and achieving health equity. And the role was made a very senior role in the organization, so it's not, it's not lip service, it's actually a real, real powerful role. I'm excited because I have touched healthcare in so many different ways, but never from the people who pay for healthcare and the people who are responsible for health and wellness that's beyond just any one health system. And so what I believe this role can do and what I'm excited to do is one, make sure that we speak health equity as a first language and that in every single encounter, whether it's somebody calling on the phone to understand their benefits or in one of our facilities getting care, that we are sensitive to, we are aware of, and we are responsive to all the other needs that people have in their life. And we're using our position as a health and wellness organization to create really meaningful and healthy experiences for people across the lifespan. I can't believe I wake up every day and it's my job to think about health equity. Like it's my job. And if, if we're intentional about it, we're thinking about it all the time, we will definitely see changes. And, and I'm proud that Humana has recognized the, the importance of Humana as a large health plan playing a role in health equity. It's not for the other people to do. It's not for some companies out there to focus on, but it's for us. And so it's great to be a leader in this space because we can see what works and, and see what doesn't work. And then we can be a test bed for change and a laboratory for progress. And so I'm excited that we, that we can do and that Humana stepped up to do this really early. I am a woman educated, a young black woman aware, I know who made me, where I come from, and more than most, I care. I am a woman brilliant, a young black woman alive. I know that all the highest peaks can be reached if you strive. Indeed, I am a woman, but I am not alone. Because of other women like me, the woman in me has grown. Ah uh, yes, a young black woman, with others quite like me. Let's all join hands and say we can, for then we'll all succeed.